Hello. Okay. I have a confession to make. So yesterday I hopped on live. I went live on Facebook and whatnot, and I was trying to do what I think I should be doing, right? It's the days, the day opened yesterday for your cycle advantage. And so what should I be doing? Well, I should be showing you the back ends of what's inside your cycle advantage and what you're going to get when you join in and why it's so amazing and all of these things. And I spent all morning like working on stuff and, you know, just life and calls and ma my mastermind calls and stuff like that. And, and talking to some of the people that have questions about joining in and things and picked up my kids from school and got home and thought, shoot, I should do this, right? That nasty should word where it comes in and it says like, I should be showing up live. And I'm hoping you can hear me. I should just double check real quick. If you are hopping on and you can hear me, will you just let me know, number one? And number two, if you are here live with me, let me know you're here or watching the replay. I would love to know, but I'm just going to double check that my audio is good because it doesn't seem to be on my end. Here. Okay. Or watching the replay. I would love it is to there. know, but I'm just audio. There it is. Just checking, just checking. With the way tech goes, sometimes I don't get it. Okay. So all of these things, right? Like I should be getting on here. I should be doing it. And as you and I have spent the last week or so together talking about our bodies and how our bodies have these peak zones and when we're most primed, me hopping on live yesterday at like four o'clock after I'd picked up the kids from school after a long day, trying to squeeze it in before we go to soccer practice was not my prime time at all. And it wasn't even something I really felt like I had something, a message or something really powerful I wanted to share. It was more in vain of that, like, I should be doing this. And so after I went live, I immediately regretted it. <laughs> I was like, I didn't say what I wanted to say. It didn't come across very well. If you were on live, like, I apologize, <laughs> you know, like if you were there watching it. And so I sent it to a friend of mine. I was like, hey, will you just watch this really quick and like, tell me what you think. And before I could even really let her respond and look at it, I decided I was going to delete the video. So I deleted it off of Facebook and YouTube. I think it was on YouTube too. I deleted it off of both of those two platforms because to me, I felt like one, I was operating out of my peak zone and I was after the fact, so full of doubt and so full of, I didn't say what I wanted to say. I didn't feel like I got across what I was really intending to do and how that is such a powerful thing, right? In just doing it at a different time of day, I didn't feel like I came across as magnetic as I really wanted to. I didn't really feel like I came, I expressed what I wanted to because I was forcing myself to do it in a time that didn't seem like it fit, it didn't really align for me. Then the second component of that is that I was doing something I thought I should be doing, not something that I really felt compelled to do. Something that I really felt like I needed to do in the sense of like from me and not because this is what all of the gurus tell me I should be doing and what I should be doing on open cart day. And so for both of those two reasons, I went live and it felt like crap and I immediately regretted it and took it back down. <laughs> so you may not have even known that I went live yesterday because I took it right back down. And so last night I sent a message to a friend of mine and she and I were chit-chatting about it. And she said, Renee, just get still and, and ask yourself, what does your audience need from you? What do you need to express and what do you need to relay? And so this morning, as I was like getting dressed and refreshed and I'm feeling so much better this morning than I was at four o'clock yesterday afternoon this message really came through that I want to share with you and that I feel like is so, going to be so powerful for you is that so much of our life and so much of our actions, so much of what we do is all around this idea of perception and what we perceive of the world, what we perceive of ourselves, right? In fact, somebody, if you were watching that live, you may not have actually even taken in any of the things that I was telling myself about my, well, the way I was showing up. 
So much of what we do and how we show up and the actions we take is all around our perception, our perception of ourselves, our perception of the world, our perception of what we're capable of. And perception can be such an elusive thing. It's such an illusion. And so I want to um, bring up two kind or like a couple of slides. Okay. So here is, and I see a couple of people on hopping on and off. Let me pop it up here. Okay. So this image over here on the right hand side, if you are watching the replay too, like feel free to like pop in the comments. What is the image that pops out to you first? Right? What do you see when you look at this image? Is it a plain, like black and white? There is no room for interpretation that there's just one thing here, or is there maybe multiple things? Okay. What do you see when you look at this image? Okay. My first impression when I look at this image is an old man, right? I see the big nose. I see his mustache, his chin, and the back of his hair. But what else is there? Do you see it? This woman, right? Here's her eyelashes, her nose, and what was the bun or the nose of the man is now the bun of her hair. Two completely different images. And I almost guarantee that half of the people watching this are going to see one thing and half are going to probably see the other. Okay. Here's another one. Let me get my mouse moving over here. Oop, did I go? Yeah. The glass, right? Is it half full or is it half empty? Is one of these two men right or is both answers the same? Or how about this one? What do you see when you look here? Immediately for me, it's the image of a tree, right? I see this big old flowery tree, but as you look at it a little bit longer, you can see right here the face of somebody and the um, oh, probably a woman, it looks like a woman, and then a face of a man over here. Both of these two images making up the tree, okay? Um, there is this one, where's the one? Oh, there it is. So this one, if you go Google body art painted is fascinating. These are so amazing, I love these. But when you look at this immediately, it looks like a photograph of a frock, but it's not a frock. It's actually two, oh, it's actually three human beings. Do you see? There's one lady here, one in the middle, and one over here. Amazing, right? What we can do with perception. And then this last one I want to show you is who is right in this image? One person says there's three sticks. The other one says there's four. Who's right? Could both of them be right? just asking. Okay. I think that was the last, yeah, the last image that I had there. Okay. So <clears throat> when we look at these images, when we look at the idea that perception shapes the way we act, perception changes our reality. The question then becomes, what is the perception you're using? So much of like right now where the world is at in the state of the world is in this sense of fear and lack. There's the, like, we're in a recession. There's rising costs. There's rising, there's fear mongering everywhere. And in fact, I don't even watch the TV. I don't watch, like, I don't watch the news. I don't follow the news. None of that because so much of it is based around fear. And fear is one of those driving things that's trying to keep you safe. Right? Fear is our body's per, like understanding and mechanism to protect yourself. But anytime you do something that's uncomfortable or outside of your comfort, like uncomfort, out of sight of your comfort zone, anything that requires you to grow is going to feel like fear. Fear is going to come in and say, I don't know. This is unknown. We've never done, we've never done this before. Are you sure? Are you sure? I don't think we should do that. And hold on. I wanted to, I have a video here. Let me see if I can exit out. 
Um, I'm going to pull up. Let me see here. I've got a video. Okay. Well, oh, here's some of the body art. Like I said, go Google like body art painting. Cause look at this, this like, isn't this amazing? That is like multiple different people. I think there was an image here that showed, oh, I don't see it. There was one oh, right here where you can see kind of like, here's the people that are in that image. It's just fascinating to me. Okay. But here is fear, right? So last summer, my daughter was a junior lifeguard and they spend all summer like you know, running the beach, diving into the water, like doing all these things, learning about the ocean. It's just amazing. I love it. They culminate the whole experience with this pier jump. Now in San Diego, you cannot jump off the piers. It's illegal to actually do so. And that, but they, for this one event, I think it's the only time anybody is allowed to jump off the pier. They will gather all of the life junior lifeguards together. All their parents can come. Like parents can jump off the pier. It's this like huge big event, right? So for a week or two leading up to this pier jump, my daughter kept coming to me talking about fear, talking about like I don't know if I want to do it. I don't know if I want to do it, right? You're it's a big jump. It's like 15 20 feet off the top of this pier into the ocean. So I did what we could do to help like decompartmentalize the fear. We talked through like, what are all the possibilities? What could happen? What, what's the worst case scenario? And how could like, we really pump her up, right? I spent a week or two really helping her try to navigate through this fear. And still the day of the, the, the pier jump came and she was still full of fear about jumping off the pier. And at that moment, it was like, you have two choices, right? You like, you either face your fear and you jump off the pier or you don't and you don't jump off the pier. Like those are really the two options. And so as we were driving down to the beach, I looked at her and I said, Kinsley, the fear is going to be there, right? We're not going to get rid of it. Like at this point, like we've talked through, we've done all these things, we've practiced, like the fear is not going to go away. The fear of the unknown it's not going to leave. You've never done this before. You've never jumped off the pier. So you have two choices. You can jump off the pier despite the fear, even with the fear still being there or not. But I can guarantee as you get up on that box, that cliff box or jump box, the fear is still going to be there. It's not going to go away, but you get to choose. So actually, I was going to play it. Hold on. Let me show you. Here she is, right? Oh, I didn't make it bigger fast enough. So, okay. So she jumped off the pier, right? But here's the thing. As successful business owners, Successful business owners are always looking for the opportunity. They're always looking for the possibility, right? There's going to be fear there. There's going to be things that come our way that are causing us to question and doubt because it's unknown. You've never been there before. You've never reached that capability. You've never done that thing. And so there is this level of discomfort and fear because your body is trying to protect yourself. But the difference between successful business owners and people that look to the world and see the opportunity or like the difference between successful business owners and those that are struggling and not seeing the progress that they want is that ability to see the possibility. They're the ones that look at things like the recession and see it as potential. Did you know that there is lots of people out there looking at this recession as a very positive thing? They see the recession as an opportunity, an a, a, a ability to get in on like the stock market. If you want to buy stocks and invest right now is the best time to do it because stocks and money and investments and everything is low. It gives you an opportunity to get in when maybe you didn't have the opportunity to do that when life felt good and everything felt wonderful. There is a whole group of people that are looking at what's happening in the world right now as an opportunity. 
as a place of possibility. So my question for you is, which one of those two people do you want to be? Looking back at, let me find my image here. Pull it up. Oops, not that one here. When we look at these, this image, right? You could be either one and be correct. You could ex be experiencing the same world right now and be seeing it from a completely different perspective of somebody else. So which one do you want to be? Do you want to look at the world right now? Look at your life, look at your circumstances and see possibilities and potentials? Or do you want to be in that place of fear and lack and doubt and limiting what's possible for you because that fear is causing you to not want to step into unknown, not take a chance and take a risk on you. Okay. The lens in which we see the world is the lens in which we take action. It's the lens in which we move forward and the outcomes that we see. So my challenge for you today is to take a look at the lens in which the way you're looking at opportunities and looking at the way you're looking at life right now. Is it from this place of possibility? So I know for a fact that for a lot of women, the thought of investing into your cycle advantage feels like a lot because it feels unknown. There's doubt and fear fear there wondering, what if, what if this doesn't work for me? What if I invest in this and it doesn't have a return on the investment I put in? What if I, I invest in this and I get overwhelmed with all the things I have life going on? I already have committed to these other programs. What if I do, I, like, what if I do this one and it's just too much? Right? I understand that those are maybe some of the questions and thoughts that are coming up for you. My challenge for you is, what if we saw that from a different perspective? What if we saw that from a different lens? Yesterday, I was talking with somebody and she was talking about having an, another program that she's already invested in and she's already committed to and that she was worried that jumping into your cycle advantage would feel like too much. That she would then feel like there was like too many things going on. And my question for that was, what if jumping into your cycle advantage enabled you to do this other program which much more, with much more power? What if you saw way more success in this other program because now you have the structure and the tools for managing your time and actually doing the thing, right? What if instead of it being something that limits you, what if it's the very thing that makes it possible? What if we shift and change the lens in which we're looking at things? Okay. Um, there was something else there, but I totally forgot what it was. So I want to show you a little bit inside of your cycle advantage so that you know what you're getting and what's going to be on the other side of the doors when you say yes to jumping into your cycle advantage. And, um, you know, like, oh, like going back, like I was going to mention too, and I totally just spaced it. It wasn't in my notes, but I really feel like this need is that I get it. I understand. I remember investing in a program. I don't know, whatever it was like three years ago. And I was sitting in the audience listening and feeling like I need to be in this program, but it was $15,000. And I can tell you at that point in my business, I did not have $15,000 to be spending, but there was something in my gut telling me, you need to do this. You need to do this. And it became this from that frame and that lens of possibility was like, how can I make this happen? How can I make this possible for me? Instead of just looking at it and being like, gosh, it's way out of my budget. It's not something I can afford. I can't do that. It became this, uh, this question of how can I, how can I make this possible? And so for me in that situation, I was like, I, I called my dad and I was like, dad, I really feel like this is something I need to do and where I want to be, 
but I can't guarantee that it's going to, I'm going to have the money to pay th this like monthly installment. I'm not sure I'm going to have, I'm going to be able to do it. But if I get to a place where I'm stuck, can you get, like get my back? I can like loan money from you to like keep going with this. And I tell you that every month that that installment payment came due, I always had the money. I never once borrowed money from my dad. Never once. Every time. And this comes from this place of like when we open ourselves up to possibility and we open ourselves up to seeing that there's so many different ways in which to generate money and to allow money to flow to us and we change our perspective, so many things are possible. And right now in the lens in which you're looking at, it may feel like I don't have the money. It's not possible. But I challenge you that even just to think about like what could become possible, where could money potentially come from? And if you were able to open up that lens, you might be surprised at where money falls in, where money comes from. Even this week, I was talking to my sister and we, she sent me a text and we were going back and forth. And she was like, look at that. Money comes from all kinds of sources, from anywhere. Like she just like randomly got some money. It's like it, it literally, when you open up that possibility that money can come from anywhere, it can come from anywhere, okay? That's a whole little like tangent there. But I do wanna show you inside your cycle advantage, okay? So let me get my lens up here. All right. So once you join into your cycle advantage, once you've decided like, I'm going to move past the sphere of the unknown and I'm going to be open to possibility and I'm going to be open to whatever is available to me, right? You know, right now already in your gut, if you trust and listen to your gut, you already know whether or not this is the place for you. I guarantee it. I guarantee if you were to ask yourself like, Am I supposed to be in this program? If you got quiet and you listened, you would know the answer. And if a thought comes in, but like, I don't know how I'm going to pay for it, or I don't know if I'm going to have a time, or I'm going to, I don't know if I, if this is going to be too much or like any of those thoughts, those are all solvable. Those are all solvable. But my challenge for you is to trust your intuition, trust that knowing. And if you know that this is where you're supposed to be, a way will become possible for you when you open yourself up to that possibility. Okay. So here's what's inside. First, once you get in, this is what it looks like. You've got coaching, call registration, the calendar, all of the things, announcements, wonderful there, right? Then we're going to dive into your four phases. Now, this is where we get to go and expand in that four phases that I talked about inside day two. We're going to expand in that area and go so much deeper. You're going to have such an intricate knowing of each of those different four phases, what you should be doing, how you should be aligning your life with it, what is those superpowers in each one of those different phases, right? Like how you step into that magnetic self that you are intended to be in that ovulatory connect phase so that you're attracting more revenue, attracting more clients, attracting more possibilities, right? Like so many opportunities are going to come to you and so many possibilities are available to you when you step into that full magnetism that you are and that you're capable of. And when you know each one of those different phases and what you should be leaning into, that's when you become superpowered. Like you so much amplify everything that's available to you. Okay. So this is such a powerful section of the training. And it's one, I start it right out of the gate because most of the time women coming in, like, like they want to know these four phases. You like want to dive in, you want to get going. And honestly, this is the section that gives people so much permission, right? Permission for that pullback, permission to take rest, permission to enjoy the pleasurable parts of life. Like so much beauty comes from these four phases. Okay. After we've done the four phases and dove into there, then we get to start like actually putting it into practice and like laying the foundation. So the second section we're going to do is creating your vision roadmap. 
So I already highlighted the fact that a lot of times women are being taught to set goals based on this masculine way of setting goals, very outcome driven, very destination driven, very like high level goal driven instead of focused on what it takes to get there. What does it feel like in the process? Is that journey to that end destination really something that you want to be on? Like, is that the journey you want to be on? And if not, then we're going to recreate that. We're going to take that vision that you have for your life and your business, and we're going to reroute. We're going to create a new roadmap for getting there that feels so much better. A roadmap for getting to that destination that allows you to take time off, that allows you to feel like, I can play and have fun. And I'm enjoying today in the moment, not just when I reach that final destination. Okay. Now I should probably have been going back and forth between there. But that second set, the third section we're going to do is unlocking your cycle story. Right. So this is where we're going to transform your cycle story from potentially this place of like negative embarrassment, frustration shame, guilt, like all the things that come layered in from society and past generations of how our cycle has been approached for so long. And you get to rewrite a new story. This section has been in the past. I actually, the last round I had it at the very end of the program. And so many of my clients were like, this was so powerful and so transformational. I wish I had had this earlier in the sections. So I've moved it forward so that you can go through and receive that healing and go through th these experiences and things that are inside this training that are going to allow you to bring healing to your body, bring healing to that story and that trauma that you potentially have experienced around your cycle and allow you to fully step into leveraging and embracing your cycle. Okay. Now, number four is biohacking your day and crafting your ideal schedule. Okay. We already talked about what is that ideal schedule for you? Not anybody else, not anybody, you know, like what somebody tells you you should be doing or how you should be working, but like, what is that for you? And then what we do is we take the actual looking at your body, not just your menstrual cycle rhythms and not just those monthly rhythms, but we're going to look at your daily rhythms and where to plug in what, and like the actual tangible stuff. Like I'm going to walk you through your calendar and walk you through my calendar and show you actually how to schedule and use some of these other strategies like time blocking in a more feminine way and create like cycle blocking and how to actually integrate the two. How do you actually put it into your calendar so that you can use it and leverage it and know where to do what? And so that you don't end up doing things like I did, like yesterday when I went live at four o'clock and then later regretted it and took it down, right? Like how you can schedule and create in your day so that you're getting more done in less time and you're knowing exactly when to show up and how to show up so that you're stepping into those fullest potential that you have possible for you so that you're not flipping between a million different tabs on your screen, wondering, you know, what to focus on and how to get stuff done and just getting caught in that overwhelm of a million things to do, but can't actually focus to get something done. This is where this section is going to be really incredibly powerful for you to unlock your body's ability to perform and your body's ability to work and without you even having to like force yourself to get through it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> The last two sections, we have adapt like a boss, become a master of your energy because life is going to happen, right? Plain and simple. Life is going to happen. So what do you do when the task required of you doesn't match where your body's at? What do you do? How do you show up? in your most magnetic radiant self when your cycle, your period shows up in the middle of a launch. Happened to me last time. <laughs> what do you do when you have a big day scheduled that you have no control over the schedule? Maybe you're speaking at an event or you're doing something and it's right in the middle of your reflect phase. This is where we get to look at like your energy and not how do I just like push through and muscle through and get the motiv motivation and the momentum like most of the masculine strategies are teaching you. This becomes the question of, hey, I have a four spoon task and I only have two spoons. 
How do I get two more spoons? How do I create two more spoons? What does my body actually need from me to have that? Okay. Powerful, powerful section. And this is oftentimes one of the big things that's missing from people that are trying to use cycle syncing is because you might be syncing things up and then be like, well, crap, like things didn't fall where they needed to go. Or I had this on the schedule and life happened. And now what do I do? And so it really becomes that question of matching up your energy and mastering that. And I will tell you that I have clients who come to me and they say, hey, Renee, <clears throat> I'm in my accelerate phase. My energy should be at its prime and it should be at its height and I should be feeling wonderful, but I'm not. Right? It's going to happen. Life happens. And that's where we go into that expand your cycle powers. And it really is about looking at how your mind and your body are intricately working together. As an occupational therapist, that is like my zone of expertise is looking at how the nervous system is responding to all of the sensory stimuli in your environment. How is your mind interacting based on what's happening and stimulating in your body? If you can't focus, chances are we got to look at the way your body is being interacted with. And if we're not tapping into your body and leaning into your body, chances are you're leaving your million dollar idea on the table. Guaranteed. Your mind and your body are so intricately connected. Oop, let me pull this up. I think I forgot it. Oh, I guess I didn't need to. But this expand your child's or your um, cycle superpowers really is where we get to expand on what's possible for you. We get to unlock those powers within your body so that you can have instant confidence, right? You can show up with like that instant radiance when you need it, that you know how to unlock focus and productivity and energy and so that you're getting more done in less time. This is such a powerful section because it allows you to unlock like capabilities beyond what your body and your mind can really do on their own. And it's about leaning into where your body's at its best and activating that, that energy and that productivity and that creativity and all of those things from inside your body. Okay. So incredibly powerful. Now I will just highlight here. There are a few other things in here like resources and extra bonuses and guest trainings and things like that. So as you get in and you become a member of your cycle advantage, you have access to all of the things that we've done like this in the past, all of our past trainings, all of our future trainings, you get access to that. You get access to all of our future coaching calls. So once you're in, you maintain access from here on out. It becomes yours. You are a part of our community. You are a part of our network. Like we get to do this together for the life of the program. So this, you, you know, you get the eight weeks of coaching right now. But next time we open the doors or next time we have coaching, like you get access to that as we go forward, as we keep going and you get access to all of the bonuses that we have coming. So if you are struggling on the hamster wheel of social media and feeling like every day is just this like content producing machine and it's hard to keep up and it's hard to know what to post so that you really attract and magnetize those ideal clients, we're going to do a whole series, a workshop series in the fall around that and helping you really master your social media, getting it done in less than an hour a week and doing it in alignment with where your phases are so that it feels super easy and feels more aligned than right now, maybe where you're stuck on that struggle bus. Then the second bonus that you're going to get is talking about your launch blueprint, right? Your profitable launch blueprint. This is something I know my clients have been asking me is looking at, hey, Renee, when you're planning out launches and when you're planning out a program and you're planning out a training, like where are you doing things? How are you doing this? Like where should I be creating my PowerPoint slides and where should I be doing all these different things so that your launch flows easily with where your cycle's at versus you feeling like, oh my gosh, everything's hitting the fan at the very last minute. Okay, so that's what that bonus is going to be for you. Lastly, the third bonus that you're going to get from joining in today is that you will, we're going to, how to talk to your kids about their cycles. Because if there's one thing that you walk away from this training with, knowing the power that you have in your body, 
but thinking about the legacy that you're creating for future generations, the legacy you're creating for your kids. I can tell you that as a mom of a daughter that is going through that kind of transition right now, she's 11, to be able to watch and to be able to help her learn to put the language and understanding of where she's at in her body and what's actually happening has been so incredibly powerful. Because as an adult, we go through those reflect phases and we get full of fear. We're full of self-doubt. We're full of limiting beliefs and all of these things that bubble to the surface for us as an adult, right? And as we move through that reflect phase, every time we have the potential for those thoughts to become like layered in as deep parts of our subconscious mind. And when those thoughts are layered in so deep in your subconscious mind, they shape the way you show up the next month right? So if you have a thought that says like, I can't do this, I'm a failure. This isn't possible for me. Then the next month, your actions are operating from that layer of thought. Now imagine that your teenage daughter, as she's going through one of the most transitional times of her life, that she has every month, these thoughts that are coming in that say, I'm not good enough. I'm not, it's not, I'm like, I'm not worthy. I'm not beautiful. It's not good enough. I'm not good enough for anybody. I have no friends, right? That Those thoughts that are coming up for her right then are becoming a part of who she is. Those are becoming a part of her identity. And for you as her mom to be able to step in and help her see, hey, these are just thoughts that are coming up because of your reflect phase. And in a week or two, you're not going to have these thoughts. They're not who you are. They're separated from you as a person. They're just thinking thoughts. You have the capability and the possibility to transform the way your daughter sees herself for the rest of her life. You have the possibility to change the legacy of your daughters forever. And if you have sons still just as powerful for you to help teach your sons the power of a woman's body. That her cycle isn't this negative derogatory thing that she has to just put up with once a month, but you can help teach them to lean into and support the women in their life. So incredibly powerful. Okay. So that is the third bonus that you get when you join into your cycle advantage. All right. Those three bonuses, how to plan your social media and ma create magnetic social media in less than an hour a week, how to create your profitable launch blueprint, and then how to talk to your kids about their cycles, not from this like biological, like, you know, the talk sort of space, but how can you help them embrace and create this new identity for themselves? All right. So incredibly powerful. Now I will tell you that I have, um, a couple of, or I like, I'm going to put my text, blah, 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 right? Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to put my phone number here at the bottom of the screen. And the reason that I'm going to do that is I want you to be able to text me and ask me any questions. If you're on the fence, if you're wondering, gosh, I don't know about your cycle advantage, right? The, talking about what I talked about at the very beginning, this whole thing about perception, I'm willing to help you talk through any of that no pressure. Like truly, honestly, I want women in your cycle advantage that know that they're supposed to be there, not that they were felt pressured to be there. So if you feel in your gut right now, there's that question of like, I want to be there and I know I need to be there. I just don't know if it's possible because of X, Y, Z, send me a text message and we'll talk it through. I will help you make that decision, whether it's the right fit for you now, or if it's not. Okay. So any question that you have, please send it my way. I might regret sending my phone number on the internet webs like this, but I really want you to be able to reach out and connect with me and to be able to help you process through that. Okay. So doors to your cycle advantage are closing on Thursday at 1159 Pacific standard time, because once they close, like I am going all in on helping support my clients. In fact, I was even today talking to some friends about like letting go of some other things in my business so that I can really lean into and create some really powerful content inside your cycle advantage 
and in some of these bonuses and things like that so that I can give my best to my clients. Like that is all about how I plan my launch. I plan my run, like my business, everything is in this space. And so once doors close, my whole focus of everything shifts to getting my clients results and helping them get transformations and helping really serve and support them. So um, that is why doors close on Thursday. Don't hesitate. Don't jump in. We, I have no, I don't have the schedule for when we're going to open up the doors again. And on my calendar, it's not there yet. So, but I can guarantee you that it's not going to be soon. So if you're on the fence, now is your time. All right. Have a fabulous day and um, challenge yourself to open up perceptions and look at possibilities and see things from a little bit of a different lens today.